Welcome viewers to the second segment of the seventh lecture for the online series of lectures for the course of Algebraic Topology 1. Uh, we will begin this segment with the definition of the boundary operator. Define a group homomorphism del P from the group of P chains on a complex K to the group of P minus 1 chains on the complex K called the boundary operator. Okay. If sigma equal to v0, v1, all the way up to vp is an oriented p simplex, p simplex with p positive, we define del p sigma to be equal to del p v0 v1 all the way up to vp okay remember the the views of notation we, we confessed in the previous segment we will denote the the p chains and the p simplex p simplex with, with the same symbol right so um you you can interpret this thing this array as um as as the elementary p chain okay and del p acting on this elementary p chain is defined as the following sum sum over all i's minus 1 raised to i times v0 vi hat all the way up to vp we number it by 2 here vi hat means that the vertex vi is absent in the given array okay Good. Since CP of K is a trivial group, by trivial group we mean that it just consists of the identity element. For P negative, the operator del P is the trivial group homomorphism. Trivial group homomorphism for p less than or equal to zero now we check the whole defined uh, sorry well definedness of of del p well definedness of del p and also check that del p of minus sigma is minus del p of sigma okay where minus sigma is the same as the simplex sigma with with op opposite orientation okay so let me raise everything so in order to check the well definedness of this boundary operator and to check that del p of minus sigma is minus del p of sigma it suffices to check that in the exchange of two adjacent vertices in the in the second equation let me write down the second equation again del p acting on this this elementary p chain
is equal to so I think it's good to close the application and then reopen reopen it So, so let me let I wanted to write uh, equation number two, del p. So the problem persists. I wanted to write the definition of del P, del P acting on this elementary P chain is defined as the following sum from I equal to 0 to P minus 1 raised to I V0 then vi is omitted then all the way up to vp okay this was equation number two so it suffices to check that under the change the under swapping off to adjacent vertices um, there is an overall change of sign okay then it will prove that del p of of minus sigma is the same as minus del p of sigma okay so we want to compare the expressions expressions for del p v0 vj comma vj plus 1 all the way up to vp and del p v0 v0 vj plus 1 vj all the way up to vp okay So we want to compare these two expressions and see what happens. So if we consider all the terms for various i's, okay, on the right side of equation 2, side of equation 2 for both these cases separately for both the cases stated above stated above this case and this case we observe that that for i not equal to j and j plus 1 the terms are identical the terms are identical except that except 
that the vertices Vj and Vj plus 1 have been interchanged. Okay. All right. So what it means is that in equation number 2, if we consider these two cases separately, then term by term we will see that we'll see that if we if we if you only take the terms for which i is not either equal to j or equal to j plus 1 then uh, the terms uh, for this and the terms for that will match with each other with an overall variation of of a sign Okay. Okay, but this is the case only when i is not equal to j and j plus one. All right. But what happens when i is equal to j and i is equal to j plus one? So we now have to consider. have to consider the terms corresponding to i equal to j and i equal to j plus 1 separately okay for the first case for this case del p v0 vj vj plus 1 all the way up to VP one has minus one raised to J so we are considering the two terms corresponding to I equal to J and I equal to J plus one so minus one raised to J uh, dot dot vj minus 1 comma vj hat okay and then vj plus 1 comma dot 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 plus minus 1 raised to j plus 1 okay where i is equal to j plus 1 dot 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 vj minus 1 v j and then v j plus one gets omitted right for after which we have v j plus two okay on the other hand in the second case on the other hand in the second case one has for this case minus one raised to j v zero v j minus one and then you see that uh, vj plus 1 here is in the j slot okay so vj plus 1 gets omitted for that reason vj plus 1 gets omitted in this term comma vj dot 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 plus minus 1 raised to j plus 1 and then 
vj minus 1 okay and uh, vj plus 1 stay intact that stays intact okay now in j plus 1 slot is vj right and that gets omitted because of that and after which we have vj plus 2 dot 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 okay now um, one verifies that this term gets cancelled against this term okay they they are the same term except you know uh, they differ by a sign only because vj minus 1 then vj plus 1 vj plus 1 and after that you have vj plus 2 here and vj plus 2 here because vj is omitted here and these two terms drop out okay vj minus 1 vj vj plus 2 just vj plus 1 is omitted okay vj plus 1 is omitted and they cancel against each other okay so what does it mean it means that so all the terms except for j plus j except for i equal to j and i equal to j plus 1 you know um, each term for this expression is the same as each term here in this expression except for a sign right so um, it's it's the story for all the terms uh, for i not equal to j and i not equal to j plus 1 and for i equal to j and i equal to j plus 1 the terms cancel each other okay which means that indeed one is the negative of the other del p v0 vj vj plus 1 all the way up to vp is the same as minus del p v0 vj plus 1 comma vj we just swap these two vertices vj plus 1 and vj and there is a minus in front vp okay good this is what we needed to verify now we deal with our second example example 2 for an oriented one simplex for an oriented one simplex v0 to v1 the uh, the the boundary operator so let me okay so erase everything let me write down the formula for the boundary operator del p v0 all the way up to vp is equal to the sum over all i's minus 1 raised to i v0 vi getting omitted and all the way up to vp this is the definition of the boundary operator okay so uh, for the oriented one simplex v0 to v1 okay so when apply the boundary operator del 1 to it i get just get v1 minus v0 okay diagrammatically it means that when you apply del 1 to this uh, to this one one chain from v0 to v1 okay so we represent the the one simplex and the one chain by the same symbol 
okay we are abusing notation but it is actually the one chain that we are dealing with okay it's elementary one chain corresponding to this oriented one simplex v0 to v1 and when this boundary operator del, del 1 act acts on this um, this oriented one chain we get a zero chain right uh, which is given by v1 minus v0 okay, we denote them by two you know the vertices v1 and v0 figure one boundary operator boundary operator you can think of it as acting on one simplex or you can think of it as the boundary operator acting on one chains okay okay i think it's better to think of it as boundary operator acting on one chain instead of one simplex right which are one chains are functions uh, on one one simplices right oriented one simplices or on chains are functions on uh, that functions that take oriented one simplices to to the set of integers okay so uh, this gives you the so the right hand side of this equation tells you that it's 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 a zero chain it's a zero chain that gives the value one on on the vertex v1 and it gives the um, the value minus one on the vertex v0 okay all right so every time something will, we, we, something like this will follow, although we are not going to specify these things in detail, but you, you have to understand that things like this are happening, okay? Uh, so we will interchangeably use simplices with, with chains, okay? Intercha interchangeably use P simplices with P chains, okay? Whenever we say that, the boundary operator acting on 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 some p chain we we sorry we, when we are saying that boundary operator acting on p simplices we actually mean the boundary operator acting on the corresponding you know um, uh, elementary p chains okay okay so now on the the case of um, of, of a two simplex oriented two simplex okay um, take uh, oriented to simplex v0 v1 v2 okay uh, so this is the diagram of a two simplex okay I'm not orienting the edges I just mean that it's a triangle we are dealing with the two simplex with with the prescribed orientation the orientation being counterclockwise okay v0 v1 v2 okay and then we apply the boundary operator del 2 on it so we apply the boundary operator del 2 on it and we know here by applying our uh, the the definition of boundary operator when we apply del 2 on this on this two chain okay elementary two chain corresponding to this oriented two simplex right we get um, we get a one chain right and which is given by um, a v1 v2 that's the first term then the second term is minus v0 v2 and then the final term is v0 v1 okay 
So this gives a one chain the value of which on the um, on the oriented one simplex v1 comma v2 is one and um, so, and the uh, and the value of this one chain on the oriented one simplex v0 v2 is minus one and the value of this uh, this one chain on the oriented one simplex v0 v1 is plus one okay this is what we mean by this one chain so it's it's given by its corresponding values on the on the element on the corresponding elementary uh, you know um, it, it, it's uh, so right so uh, so when I'm writing this I mean that I have uh, I have a one chain that results in from this uh, from this action of the boundary operator on this um, elementary two chain okay but this the resulting one chain is not no longer an elementary one chain this is an uh, this is a one chain whose value on the oriented one simplex v1 comma v2 is one and um, whose value on the oriented one um, oriented one simplex v0 v2 is minus 1 and its value on v0 v1 it, th this oriented one simplex is plus 1 okay this is not an elementary one chain it's a it's a one chain of which which is a linear combination of uh, of elementary one chains okay good now um, so diagrammatically it means that uh, we get something like this on the right hand side which is the boundary of of this triangle v0 v1 v2 so I go from v0 to v1 and then uh, from v1 to v2 and since there is a minus sign in front I don't go from v0 to v2 I go in the opposite direction okay so this is the figure which tells us how the boundary operator operator acts on oriented two chains To be more precise, um, how the boundary operator acts on uh, elementary two chains. Okay. This is an elementary two chain. Okay, now for the three simplex, V0, V1, V2, V3, this is a three simplex, and one can apply the boundary operator on the uh, three chain corresponding to this this three oriented three simplex meaning that it's an elementary three chain that we are dealing with and we are acting the elementary uh, the boundary operator on that elementary three chain so that we have del 3 v0 v1 v2 v3 results in a two chain right the two chain given by so the first term would be v1 v2 v3 and then I have a minus v0, v2, v3. Then I have plus again v0, uh, v1, v3, and minus finally minus v0, v1, v2. Okay. So this is. Uh, this is a three chain sorry this is this is a two chain on the right I have a two chain okay 
the two chain whose value on the elementary two simplex v1 v2 v3 is plus 1 whose value on the the uh, oriented two simplex v0 v2 v3 is minus 1 and whose value on the oriented two simplex v0 v1 v3 is plus 1 and whose value on the oriented two simplex v0 v1 v2 is minus 1. So this is the two chain that we have on the right hand side. Okay. So delta 3 acting on this elementary um, elementary 3 chain gives us a 2 chain on the right side. Okay, so diagrammatically it means that I have a tetrahedron, sorry, I have a tetrahedron V0, V1, V2 and then V3 here. This is a tetrahedron. Okay and I apply the boundary operator to it and I so yeah it has to be a, an um, so first of all I have an oriented three simplex right given by this uh, orientation according to the right hand screw rule and I, so this is an oriented three simplex and I consider the elementary chain corresponding to this oriented three simplex and act the boundary operator on that to obtain the boundary okay that will be uh, that is um, a two chain so diagrammatically it means that we get uh, uh, the boundary of the tetrahedron so let me draw the tetrahedron again v0 v1 v2 and then we have v3 here right and uh, so so v1 v2 v3 is v1 v2 v3 means that it's oriented um, counterclockwise and this phase is v0 v2 v3 v0 v2 v v3 is on the other side that's why there is a minus sign in front so it it is clockwise and it is denoted by a dotted circular arrow because it's on the other side right and uh, v0 v1 v3 is counterclockwise orientation corresponding to this face. This is the face. Counterclockwise. And then finally V0, V1, V2, right? There is a minus sign in front. Therefore, it's again clock, clock, clockwise and we draw it with a dotted arrow again because it's at the bottom in the clockwise direction. Okay, so this is diagrammatically that we have on the right side okay good now um, figure 3 was the caption of the figure boundary operator operator acting on on an elementary 3 chain Three chain. <clears throat> okay, corresponding to uh, a given oriented three simplex. Okay, good. All right. So now um, our third example, which tells us that if we take so the question naturally that can arise uh, following what we have discussed, what will be the boundary of a boundary? Okay. Uh, so the boundary of a boundary is zero that we'll see in the following example. Example three, consider the one chain 
del 2, v0, v1, v2. Okay, um, and this is a one chain, right? We have seen it earlier with the figure, which corresponds to uh, the the right side of figure two. Okay, that we drew earlier. I'm not going to draw it again. And now, if we further apply the boundary operator on it, act if it is acted upon del one, del one composed with del two v0 comma v1 comma v2 so if if we have this expression then this is equal to we know that this is nothing but um, um, a v1 comma v2 uh, minus uh, v0 comma v2 plus v0 comma v1 we have seen it earlier right now delta 1 acting on each of them uh, gives us the following expressions uh, this is equal to when delta 1 hits this v1 comma v2 this gives us v2 minus v1 and then there is a minus in front so this gives us v2 minus v0 and then we have v1 minus v0 okay v2 cancels against v2 here v1 cancels against this v1 and plus v0 cancels against minus v0 so that we have a 0 on the right Okay, so um, uh, all right. So we see that the boundary of a boundary is zero. So now uh, for the two chain. So consider the two chain del three v zero v one v two v3 it's a two chain right um, and uh, let this two chain be acted upon by del 2 right so we, we have seen that this is equal to um, a two chain given by this expression um, v1 comma v2 comma v3 then minus v0 comma v2 comma v3 then plus uh, v0 comma v1 comma v3 then there is a minus sign in front then we have finally v0 v1 v2 okay and now you know I let this uh, two chain acted upon by this boundary operator and we have you know when delta x on this guy we have um, v2 comma v3 then we have minus v1 comma v3 then we have plus v1 comma v2 this is first we have then we have uh, v2 comma v3 then uh, we have minus v0 comma v3 then we have finally plus v2 no then we have finally uh, v0 comma v2 right right for this term i have um, v1 comma v3 then minus v0 comma v3 and the plus v0 comma v1 okay and for the last term for this uh, two chain, for this elementary two chain, we have uh, when when the boundary operator delta x acts on this elementary two chain, we get we get um, um, v one comma v two, 
and then minus v0 comma v2 and finally plus right v0 comma v1 you see that v2 comma v3 cancels against this v2 comma v3 minus v1 comma v3 cancels against this v1 comma v3 uh, v1 comma v2 cancels against this v1 comma v2 and plus v0 comma v3 cancels against this minus v0 comma v3 and v minus v0 comma v2 cancels against this v0 comma v2 and plus v0 comma v1 cancels against this minus v0 comma v1 so that we have 0 okay so we have seen that boundary of a boundary is 0 again for the case of uh, this two chain okay good so let me erase everything now the computations of this example the third example the computations done in example 3 illustrate a general result given by the following lemma lemma 2 which tells us that del p minus 1 composed with del p is equal to 0 here goes the proof quite straightforward so del p minus 1 composed with del p acting on a p chain v0 v1 all the way up to vp okay. now this according to the definition of boundary operator gives us uh, the sum over all i's from 0 to p we take these expressions containing i minus 1 raised to i del p minus 1 the the p minus 1 chain where the vertex the vertex vi is omitted all the way up to vp okay so i i keep this del p minus 1 intact okay so del p is acting on this um, on this p chain okay all right so now um, so let this p chain uh, uh, let this uh, sorry this is a p minus 1 chain right vi is omitted so let this p minus 1 chain be acted upon by p uh, del p minus 1 and then we have another summation symbol coming into play so this is the first summation from i equal to 0 to p minus 1 raised to i then we have a second summation sum over j and i split this sum into two parts for all j's less than i and for the j's greater than i one is for the j's less than i minus 1 raised to j then v0 since j is happening before i so uh, before uh, vi hat there will be a vj hat since j is less than i all the way up to vp then plus then now i take all the j's which are greater than i minus 1 raised to j minus 1 i'll explain in a while why there is a j minus 1 sign here j minus 1 in the exponent here v0 now j since j is greater than i so v vj hat is going to going to be you know 
be, be later. VJ hat will be situated uh, later, later than VI, v, v hat, VI hat. So um, VI hat, comma, dot, 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 VJ hat. Then I have all the way up to VP. And uh, the bracket closes. Okay. So why J minus 1? J minus 1, since Vj actually occurs at J minus 1 slot when J is greater than I. Because V I is 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 not there. V I is already omitted. Okay. When J is greater than I, since at I at slot V I is already absent. This is the reason we are raising minus 1 to j minus 1 instead of j. Okay, so now this is equal to, so we put the two summations next to each other, i equal to 0 to p, j is less than i, minus 1 to the i, minus 1 to the j, vj hat, comma, v i hat comma plus i equal to 0 to p j is greater than i minus 1 raised to i minus 1 raised to j minus 1 dot 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 Okay, um, then I have here uh, the VI hat appearing first and then VJ hat. Okay, so I can take off this J min minus 1 from J minus 1 and put a minus here in front. Okay, this is our equation number 3. So we erase everything except for this equation, the third equation, we'll need it. Now fix two positive integers, fix two positive integers, i0 and j0, okay, with I, j0 less than i0. And we also want I0 to be less than P. Right? We know what P is because we are dealing with, with the P chain. Right? So we have a fixed value of P. So once we do that, take the term corresponding to i equal to i0 which is uh, already less than p and j is equal to j0 right and so we already know that j is j0 is already less than i0 in the first command In, in in equation number three, this this term is given by minus one raised to so so I plug in i to be equal to 
i0 here and j to be equal to j0 so that this term is i1 minus 1 raised to i0 plus j0 times this this p minus 2 chain right Okay, right. So this P minus 2 chain is going to be equal to um, this dot 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 dot. So I, I plug in uh, J0, right, for, for J. So this is V hat J0, comma, dot dot, and we plug in I0 for I, right? So this is I0, comma, dot, dot. This is expression number four, okay? In the second summand, in the second summand of three, this is the second summand, pick up the term pick up the term corresponding to i equal to j0 which is of course less than p and j is equal to i0 which is greater than j0 This term reads this term reads so so this term is minus minus one raised to I zero plus J zero times so we are taking i to be equal to j0, right? This is v, this is v at j0, and we are taking j to be i0, v hat i0. This is expression 5. Okay, now the term 4 appearing in the first command cancels the term 4 appearing in the first command. cancels cancels the term 5 the term 5 appearing in the second summand second summand of 3. So the term 4 appearing in the first summand of equation 3 cancels the term 5 appearing in the second summand of equation 3. Okay, So this way we see that each term of the first summand cancels against a term appearing in the second summand of equation 3 so that uh, the right hand side of equation 3 is is just zero hence one verifies that indeed del p minus 1 composed with del p is equal to zero 
meaning that the boundary of a boundary is zero, QED. Now, we need some definitions. So, uh, we consider the group homomorphism, del P, from the group of P chains on the complex K to the group of P minus 1 chains on the complex K. And we know that the kernel of this map, the kernel of del P, this group homomorphism, is a, is a subgroup of this group of P chains on the complex K. It is called the group of P cycles P cycles and is denoted by denoted by Z P of K okay the image of the group homomorphism homomorphism del p plus 1 from the group of p plus 1 chain on the complex k to the uh, to the group of p chains on the complex k is is again a subgroup of of the group here cpk cp of k it is called the group of p boundaries boundaries and is denoted by denoted by bp of k okay now since we know from uh, lemma 2 that uh, delta p composed with delta p plus 1 is equal to 0 so this is what we proved okay just take p to be p plus 1 and you will get this okay uh, this holds according to lemma 2 and one sees that from this one sees that sees that um, image of the boundary operator image of the boundary operator del p plus 1 boundary operator del p plus 1 that is the group of p boundaries the group of p boundaries okay is contained in the kernel of the boundary operator del p in the kernel of the boundary operator operator del p that is the group of p cycles Okay, so th this is what we see from here because if we take 
a p plus 1 chain and act it up on del p plus 1 that will be here right and which will be a p boundary okay and that p boundary when acted upon by del p will give 0 which means that that p boundary is in the kernel of this boundary operator del p in other words that p boundary is a p cycle so to phrase it slightly differently slightly differently each boundary boundary of a p plus 1 chain which is a p boundary is automatically a p cycle automatically a p cycle okay so which means that each p boundary is a p cycle meaning that this containment hold this containment holds each p boundary is a p cycle so now we define the pth homology group of the simply shell complex k to be the quotient of the group of p cycles by the quotient uh, by the uh, um, the the group of boundary of Mm, uh, by the p boundaries by the group of p boundaries okay so um so we just have seen that uh, the the group of p boundaries is contained in the group of p cycles and the quotient group is given is is precisely the p homology group of the simply shell complex k and we define this and call it the pth homology group of the simply shell complex k okay all right so it's time to do some computations of uh, of homology for a given simply shell complex, let us take the fourth example. We, we consider the following complex, which is the boundary of a square. So there are four vertices V0, V1, V2, V3, and the oriented edges. E1, E2, E3, E4. So this is so this is a one dimensional complex K. And the underlying space. Line space mod k of this 1d complex k is the boundary of a square boundary of a square square with ages e1 
e2, e3, and e4. Okay. Good. Now the group C1 of K, okay, the group of one chains on the complex K is free abelian. Okay, of rank four. It is it is generated by the set. E1, E2, the set of ages, four ages. Okay. Or if you want to say that it, it's generated by the elementary one chains corresponding to oriented one simplices given by E1, E2, E3, and E4. Still okay. Okay. So it's better to call it this way. No, it's it, it's the so we should take the 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 elementary one chains corresponding to these oriented one simplices e1 e2 e3 and e4 and take their linear combinations to write a generic element of c1 k c1 of k that's what we are doing now so an element uh, so a generic element of c1 k a generic element which is a one chain element of C1K is written as C is equal to N1 E1 plus N2 E2 plus N3 E3 plus N4 E4 where each of these Ni's are integers okay so remember that these E1, E2, E3, and E4 are elementary chains corresponding to those four oriented one simplices, E1, E2, E3, and E4. So again, we are engaged in abuse of notation like before. Okay, so let me raise everything. We need space. So now, um, I want to find out the condition when this elementary one, sorry, when this one chain C is actually a one cycle. And for this, I need to find the del 1 C, okay? So C, if, since C is a one chain, del 1 C is by definition is a, is a zero chain. And which is given by N1 uh, v1 so let me draw the picture I need it v0 v1 v2 v3 this is e1 this is e2 this is e3 and this is e4 right so we wrote uh, c as uh, n1 e1 plus n2 e2 plus n3 e3 plus n4 e4 okay so that del 1 c is n1 times uh, e1 del 1 e1 is v1 minus v0 plus n2 v2 minus v1 plus n3 um, del 2 del 1 of e3 is v3 minus v2 and finally del 1 of e4 is v0 minus v3 so this reduces to the following expression n4 minus n1 times v0 plus n1 minus n2 times v1 plus n2 minus n2 minus n3 times v2 plus n3 minus n4 times 
v3. So this was equation number 6 and this is equation number 7. So, um, so from 7 we see that um, the, the value of the zero chain del 1c on the vertex v0 is n4 minus n1. The value of this zero chain on the vertex v1 is n1 minus n2. Also the value of this zero chain on the vertex v2 is n2 minus n3. And finally the value of this zero chain on the vertex v3 is n3 minus n4, right? We want all these values to vanish so that c is a one cycle, right? So we want n4 to be equal to n1, to be equal to n2, to be equal to n3. And in that case, del1, c will be 0 and c will be a 1 cycle. Therefore, from equation 7, one concludes that C is a one cycle that is the boundary of C is zero if and only if only if n1 is equal to n2 is equal to n3 is equal to n4 using 6 this expression such a one cycle is written as c is equal to n1 times e1 plus e2 plus e3 plus e4 you can factor out n1 from this expression since all of these coefficients are the same with n1 belonging to the set of integers. One concludes immediately that this uh, the group of one cycles for this complex k is infinite cyclic and is generated by generated by the one chain e1 plus e2 plus e3 plus e4 okay so this is one thing since there are no two simplices in k C2 of k, the group of two chains on the simplex k, is by definition trivial. Okay? This is a trivial group, meaning that it consists of the zero element only. So recall that Cp of k is trivial if P is strictly greater than the dimension of the complex K. In this case, the, the dimension of the complex K is 1, right? And since we are dealing with C2 of K and 2 is greater than 1, C2 of K is trivial. Since C2, K, C2 of K is, is trivial, B1 of K is also trivial, right? because B1 of K is a subgroup of C2 of K.
Đấy. Let me see. Not really. B1 of k is trivial as well because uh, since since C2 of k is trivial and uh, and the image of uh, del2 right so this is del 2 and um, it it's a map from c2 of k to c1 of k right and the image of this boundary operator del 2 is going to be uh, b1 of k right and b1 of k is a subgroup of C1 of K, right? And since C2 of K is trivial, the image of uh, this uh, this trivial group is going to be trivial as well in C1 of K, and hence B1 of K is also trivial. Okay, so this is how we see that uh, it's trivial, and hence B1 of K is also trivial also trivial okay and therefore we immediately see that h1 of k the first homology group of this complex k is nothing but z1 of k the group of one cycles of this comp on this complex k because b1 of k is trivial and this is isomorphic to the set of integers Z right because of this so this is how we compute the first homology group of this complex of this one of this one dimensional complex K okay all right so this is a good time to take a break and we'll be back uh, with more examples in the last segment of this seventh lecture. Thank you for attending this uh, second segment.